We're going to end this week's edition of Market Journal with something cattle and corn producers will find helpful. We all know that grazing leaves behind crop residue, but getting cattle to graze what's left over can be beneficial to each producer. Beef specialist and associate dean of extension Rick Rasby joined me to explain more. The research that we're talking about has been going on for a number of years, talking about cattle grazing on the corn stalks and how that's not only beneficial to the cattle producer, but also the corn producer as well. So let's talk first about the cattle producer. Talk about some ways it's beneficial for them. So that's this has really been a, a really economical feed resource for the cattle. And uh, we think about mostly uh, cows that graze it, but we do have some, some folks that will put some uh, wean calves or calves out there on that, but they'll do some kind of supplementation there. But from a, a cow standpoint, it, uh, it, for a March calving cow, uh, if you have them graze the husk and leaf, you don't have to do any supplementation because it'll maintain weight and body condition on, on those uh, cows. Now for, um, for first calf heifers, you might got to pay a little bit more attention to them because their nutrient requirements are a little bit higher. You might need to do a little bit of supplementation. But for the most part, you're just thinking about for mature cows, uh, mineral supplementation is about the only thing that you need to do. Other than water, of course you need water out there, but mineral supplementation. So it really is a real good feed resource. If you have fall calving cows and you have cow-calf pairs going out there, then you got to think more about supplementation on them. And they're selective grazers too. They're going to take that, that husk and the leaf first and leave everything else, right? Exactly. That's the thing about cattle is that, uh, is that if there's any corn out there, and any more, there's not a lot of corn left out there. Those combines are more like vacuum sweepers anymore. But there's very little corn out there, so you're talking about husk and leaf. And that's exactly what they'll do. They'll take the corn first, followed by the husk and leaf, and finally the cob and the stock. And if you take a look at the nutrient quality, Corn is going to be the highest in nutrient quality out there, but followed by the husk and leaf and finally the cob and the stock. And they don't understand nutrient quality, the cattle don't, sure. but those are the components that are most palatable and those are the ones that they'll go after. Yeah, they just know it tastes good. They just know it and, 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 and they're palatable, they, they'll eat it. When you get down to the, the cob and the stock, you don't want to graze that far anyway, but uh, that's not very palatable and so they'll selectively graze and, and, and husk and leaf will be one of those in the hierarchy. Okay, so we talked about the cow producer now, moving on to the corn producer, and this research shows that the grazing isn't going to have negative impacts on the yield for the next year. So is that just if you're a corn producer, then you're going to plant more corn, or if you decide to rotate over to, over to soybeans, uh, is one better than the other? We saw it both ways. We saw it, there's no reduction in yield. Especially as you move further east, there's the corn-soybean rotation, so we took a look at that. In fact, there's no difference in corn on corn after grazing or corn-soybean rotation, so there's no in negative effect on yield. The thing that we'd ask folks to do is that uh, as you think about grazing corn residue, we'd ask them to use our corn stock grazing calculator because it, it basically, uh, our data would be uh, uh, a function of us using that corn stock grazing calculator, and that basically calculate amount of husk and leaf and take half the husk and leaf and that's when you can move on to some other other field. And besides the corn grazing calculator, also the corn residue exchange, you want to mention that as well? You bet. Uh, so uh, um, Jay Parson and his graduate students put together a nice, uh, it's kind of like the hay exchange and so this is a corn residue exchange and so folks that, that have residue that they'd like to have grazed can match up with folks that have cattle to graze and vice versa. So as you move, you know, I grew up back out west, and there's not a, a, a field of corn that's not, not grazed. As you move further east, there's actually more corn sure. acres, but there's fewer cows. And so there will be some years that, uh, that you can stand the freight to get cattle to a cheap uh, feed resource. And so there is that, uh, that exchange that, that is really being used quite extensively. First year not used very much, but boy, now it's being used quite a bit. Any other uh, research you guys are working on that the viewers would like to know about? You know, sometimes uh, folks say, well, you know, the research that you've done at, at, at Eastern Nebraska at Mead or the research that maybe you've done at North Platte doesn't uh, apply to, the, to my location. And, you know, there's a lot of different locations and, and a lot of different soil types and those kinds of things across the state. And a couple years ago, we uh, had a SARA project where we had um, residue grazing at six locations across the state and we measured all the kinds of things that we measure on our, our uh, big plots in uh, eastern Nebraska at our research and at North Platte at that research station and we got the same data 
in three years that they got in 20 years. And so uh, we're really comfortable with our grazing recommendations on corn residue.